Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to do a short tutorial on how to draw dog ears in colour pencil. Before we get into the tutorial though, if you're wanting to follow this in real time, then head over onto my Patreon page as I have over 75 videos, including this one, for just $5 per month. As always, all the materials that I have used are listed in the description below, so if you want to check those out, you can. First things first, before I actually lay down any colour onto the portrait, I make sure that I lift some of the graphite, and that's just so it doesn't show through when I do go in and add those light coloured pencil layers. So once I've lifted off my graphite a little, I then go in and I add my first base layer, and that is using the warm grey one pencil. When you add your base layers onto your piece, you tend to use the lightest colours of whatever colour dog or animal that you're drawing. So if you're drawing a brown dog, then you would most likely go in with a light grey as well. But if you're drawing a funky coloured animal, such as you want to draw it in pink or something, then go in with a light pink and then gradually build up to your dark. But in my case, I am using a warm grey one pencil and I'm just adding all of this in the direction that the fur on their ears are going. As you can see, as I'm adding the base layer colour over you can kind of see the graphite showing through a little bit and that's because I haven't fully erased it as if I did fully erase it then I would just have to go back over and map in everything all over again so I've just gently lifted it so it doesn't show through as much but you can just about see it through my base layers. Once I've added that initial base layer of the warm grey one, I then go over and add a cold grey one layer. And that's just to balance out the warm and the cold tones within the piece. Once I've then added those layers down, I then go in with my darkest colour, in my case it's the dark sepia, and I start to map out all of the individual hairs and some of the individual clumps of hairs. So when I'm doing this, sometimes I can get a little bit lost and it really helps to think of the clumps of hair in terms of shapes. And it's also useful not to actually add each individual hair and outline each individual one. You just want to outline your general clumps of hair and just make sure that you've got all of the significant ones mapped in. So as you can see, I'm just mapping in some of the darkest parts. I'm just following the shapes on the reference photo and also just following the direction that the fur is going in. I always wanna make sure that I am following the direction of the fur and note if there are any fur direction changes. So by adding the dark sepia down before I go in and add any of the mid-tones, it just helps me keep those mapped out fur parts in mind so I don't lose them as I add darker colours. When I am doing this, I'm also making sure that I slightly blend out into the existing area a little bit, and that's just to help everything blend when I start to add the mid-tones and everything over the top. Once I've mapped out a few of my hairs, I then go over a second time and I start to make certain parts darker according to the reference photo. So I add a second layer of the dark sepia, as you can see that I'm doing now, just making certain parts darker. And all I'm doing is just looking at my reference photo and sometimes I'm squinting at it as that helps to really bring out the darkest parts. So if you squint at your reference photo, you can see the lightest and the darkest parts, the contrast a lot better. And then I'm just applying this to my actual portrait drawing. Once I've mapped in a few of the hairs and everything at the top of the ear and then darkened up a certain few, then I go in and I start to apply my mid-tone. And I'm doing that just by using the dark sepia pencil once more and just applying a very, very light layer all over. Again, I'm making sure that I work in the direction that the fur is going and if there are any fur changes, then I change my pencil to match that. This is where mapping out those individual strands and those darkest parts where the f fur is overlapping and everything, this is where that really comes in handy because you can really see if there are any fur changes. It makes it a lot easier that I don't have to keep referencing my reference photo all the time. I can just add the mid-tone layer by just gently shading the dark sepia just by looking at the clumps that I have originally mapped out. Then I can get the fur direction and everything spot on.
So once I've added in a nice layer, soft layer of the dark sepia, I then go in and burnish a little bit with one of the lighter colours. So I like to use the cold grey one to just burnish over and just add a cooler tone to my piece. If you've got a warmer toned piece then obviously use a warmer toned lighter pencil just to burnish. And if you don't like to burnish at all then you can just use a solvent blender. Both methods work really well for this. So I just burnish with the lighter pencil until everything is nice and smoothed out and I don't have very much of the grain of the paper showing. And then I go in again with the dark sepia pencil and I really start to darken everything up. So this is where I really pay attention to the reference photo and then I really see where those darks and those lights are. So again, I squint at the reference photo because it's easier to pick out the contrasts and then apply it to my work once more. So I like to work in different sections along the ear, so I've done the top section first. I just find that it helps to really condense the amount of work that you have to do by working in smaller sections. It also helps with not losing your place on the reference photo, so when you're working on curly ears and fluffy ears like this, it's really hard to keep your concentration and I often find that my eyes go a little bit blurry where I've just looked at the reference photo and everything and the work too much. So just working in smaller sections like this I find really helps with the concentration and it just helps keep me going. So when I start work on the bottom section of the ear I'm applying exactly the same things as I did to the top section. So I'm adding the first base layer of the warm grey one and then I'm applying a, another base layer of the cold grey one. So I apply my base layers in exactly the same way and following the direction of the fur, looking at the reference photo and seeing if there are any fur direction changes and then applying them to the base layer as I'm layering it down. When I'm applying the base layers as well, I'm using a medium soft pressure, so I'm not pushing too hard, but I'm not pushing too lightly that I don't actually get any colour come off onto the paper. So I'm sort of in between with the pressure. Once I've then added those base layers, I then pick up my dark sepia pencil and I start to map in all of the hairs and everything once more. So you can see that I had mapped out all of these really fine wispy hairs which are occurring over on the left hand side of the ear and they're really white as well so I'm keeping those clear of any dark sepia. So what I'm doing is just applying the dark sepia, picking out those clumps of hair, thinking of them in terms of shapes rather than actual hairs. If I think of them as actual hairs, it tends to look a little bit stringy and that's something that you really want to avoid. You want to keep it nice and natural looking. So that's why I think of everything in terms of shapes. Some of the shapes are a little bit weird, I must admit, but it really does help rather than just keep thinking of everything as individual lines. So when I want to try and get like a concaved look, what I do there is I fill in the base layers and then I apply a light shading of the dark sepia and then to either end of the concaved area I apply a really hard pressure of the dark sepia. You can see the example on the left hand side of the ear in the middle there. You can see that I have applied a dark layer of the dark sepia to above and below and then in the middle I have then glazed over some of those lighter colours. I've gone in and burnished with a cold grey one and a little bit of the Caran d'Ache Luminance White as well to just bring out the middle where it is concave. That's the highest point and the dark sepia areas are the lowest point. So you can see that that's what I've got going on. It sort of concaves up and then dips back down and underneath some of those wispy hairs. As I mentioned before, I like to burnish when I'm doing this kind of work as I find that's the method that works easiest for me but using a solvent blender works just as well and you would apply your layers in exactly the same way except instead of burnishing you would of course add a layer of solvent and then you could add the lighter colour over the top just to make everything a little bit brighter so then you can really darken everything else up as well. When you're drawing curly ears it really helps to be exact as you can with your curls so you want to make sure that each curl and each piece of fur carries on from the next. So when I have drawn the top half of the ear I'm making sure that the bottom half of the ear flows on from the top. If I didn't make sure that it didn't flow on then it would obviously look really unnatural and that's not something that you want to strive for when you're trying to produce photorealistic work.
it comes to adding the little wispy bits at the end of the ears um, and you get those little flyaway hairs coming off the side, what I do is just use a very light pressure on my pencil and just taper the stroke. So I am putting a harder pressure to begin with at the root of the hair and then I'm following the direction of the hair and then as I'm getting towards the end I'm just lifting off my pencil to create a really fine feathered point and I'm adding these to the bottoms of the ears just to make them look really soft and really wispy. When I'm adding those soft and wispy parts I don't tend to burnish over the top as I find that burnishing just makes them look a little bit too smooth whereas I want to make them look quite fly away and quite messy so just leaving them unburnished looks the best in my opinion. You can burnish yours if you want a really smooth silky look but for the example that I'm working on he had some quite coarse ends to the fur so I just left them unburnished and quite raw looking. So once I've added a majority of the fur lines and detail and everything into the ear, then it's time to just look over it with fresh eyes, make any adjustments, look at the contrast and the lights and make sure that I've got them 100% correct. It's really important that you get the contrast and everything right when you are drawing curly ears. When you don't get them right, it can just look a little bit flat and you can tell that something just isn't right and that's probably because you haven't got your contrasts and your lights accurate. Once you've got those accurately in then you can go over the top and start to add some wispy hairs and I like to do this with a luminance white pencil make sure it's really sharp so that you can get right into the tooth of the paper and add those wispy lines easily. Once I've added some wispy lines, then it's time to go over and glaze some colours. And the colours that I like to use on this one are some nougat from the Polychromos and also some Payne's Grey 30%, just to give the fur a little bit of a cool tone as that's what my reference photo was showing. So I like to glaze some colours over the top as I just feel that it just gives the black a little bit of an extra pop. I could add it underneath or on top, but in this instance I liked to add it on the top as I felt that it just made the colour a little bit more prominent rather than just in the backgrounds of the black fur. So hopefully you have enjoyed this short tutorial, hopefully there was something here that you hadn't tried or hadn't thought about before. If you liked this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to tick that bell icon for notifications of all of my future time lapses and tutorial videos. And I hope to see you in my next video guys. Bye!